This is Jennifer Kretschmer of J. Kretschmer Fine Art, Natural and Colorful Watercolor Paintings. In this video, I'm going to share with you my steps in painting with transparent watercolor. The painting is Philoli Orchid, which I painted from a reference photo I took while visiting Philoli Estate in Woodside, California. Here is the reference photo I took of a Cattleya Orchid that was in the living room parlor at the Philoli Estate. Before we get to the first step of the painting, here are the materials used. 300 pound watercolor paper, Windsor Newton Art Masking Fluid, various watercolor brushes with short handles, and watercolor tube paint. The colors of paint used were Daniel Smith brand Indenthrone Blue, Carbazole Violet, Aerolin Yellow, Sap Green, and Permanent Brown. I also used Holbein brand Opera for the pink color. Let's get started with the painting. After mounting the 300 pound watercolor paper to my substrate, I drew the orchid image and masked areas that I want to keep white. I like to use Windsor Newton Art Masking Fluid. I protect my brush from the sticky fluid by wetting the brush bristles and applying liquid hand soap, making sure that all the bristles are coated. As soon as I'm done putting the masking fluid on the paper, I wash the brush thoroughly and pat dry with a paper towel. I allow the masking fluid to dry on the paper for at least one hour before painting. I've enhanced the photo so that the masked areas can be seen. They are the bright yellow areas. I believe that paintings with strong values create the most interest in works of art. By this I mean that there are very dark areas and very light, nearly white areas. To achieve this, I will often paint the first few layers using a monochromatic color palette. In this painting, I use Daniel Smith Indian Throne Blue and Carbazole Violet in the first layer of color. I continue with the monochromatic painting, making the darks nearly black, using only the two colors mentioned in the last step. In some areas, I painted over dry areas of paint, creating another layer. The whites are the white paper showing through with little to no paint in those areas. It's time to change this painting from monochromatic to vibrant color. Using Holbein Opera for the pinks, Arlen or Cobalt Yellow for yellow, Sap Green and Permanent Brown, I apply the paint wet into wet on top of the monochromatic layers. The previous layers are allowed to dry completely so that they do not run when this new layer is added. Because this is transparent watercolor, the dark values of the previous layers are still there. However, the new layer of color appears to blend with the previous ones and creates depth. There is a lot of purple and green in this painting. I chose to do a yellow background color by thinking of the color wheel. Yellow is opposite or the complement of purple. Yellow is also adjacent to green on the color wheel. Backgrounds should never be one solid color, so I painted the yellow very wet onto the paper and then dropped permanent brown into some areas, especially in the bottom right corner, to add weight to that side of the painting. After the paint was completely dried, I removed all of the masking fluid and exposed the white areas. The final step is to smooth some of the white areas left by the removal of the masking fluid. To do this, I use a clean brush with clean water and scrub any of the edges so that I don't get a crisp line. In some areas, like the leaves, the scrubbing pulled green into those areas, softening the look of the leaves. In other areas, as in some of the petals, I left the crisp transitions to emphasize the folding of the petals over each other. Lastly, I signed my name using a drafting pen dipped in permanent brown paint. And here is the completed painting framed. Thank you for watching this video. Please visit my blog for a written version of these steps at www.jkretschmer.com 
slash blog.